You are the face of God. I hold you in my heart. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face of God. I hold you in my heart. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face of God. Tu es l'image de Dieu. I hold you in my heart. Tu es l'image de l'amour. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face of God. Tu sais la luce di Dio. I hold you in my heart. Tu sais il volto dell'amore. You are a You are the face of God I hold you in my heart You are a part of me You are the face of God You are the face of God I hold you in my heart You are a part of me You are the face of God You 
Good morning, and welcome to Spiritual Life Center, a church that love is building. Holy, the presence of the Lord is in this place. I 
can feel God's mighty power and God's grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Let us pray. Dear God, we embrace the words of the prophet Isaiah, who said, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people, but the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. Loving spirit, we would have your light that shines in us, expressed through us, into every area of our lives. Open our minds and hearts to do that which is ours to do, to bring this about. We know that in this way, we shall truly experience your kingdom here on earth. And for this and all blessings. We are truly grateful. Thank you, God. Amen. I believe for every drop of rain that falls, a flower grows. I believe that somewhere in the darkest night, a candle glows. I believe for everyone who goes astray, someone will come to show the way. I believe, I believe, I believe above the storm, the smallest prayer will still be heard. I believe that someone in the great somewhere hears every word. Every time I hear a newborn baby cry or touch a leaf or see the sky, then I know One of the greatest privileges we have as a body of believers is to pray with people around the world. We turn now to the presence of God that is within and surrounding us. Not only do we pray for ourselves, but we pray for others the world over. As we pray, we know it is not I, but the Christ within who does the work. During this sacred time of prayer, let us immerse ourselves fully and freely in the love of God. As we still our minds and bodies, we feel God's love flowing through us. We welcome this awareness, this oneness with all of life. Effortlessly now, we open ourselves to the flow of love and wisdom that surges around and through us. This peaceful, powerful feeling tenderly moves our thoughts into a new understanding. Divine love is present within us, within every circumstance of our lives. Divine love is the fountain from which the peace of our hearts flows to bless our lives and our world. With faith, we release any doubt 
any feelings of judgment or concern. Thoughts of harmony and love fill our awareness. We are at peace with ourselves, with all people, and with life. Inner peace is ours. Divine love blesses your life with peace. I ask you to hold that thought. Divine love is now blessing my life with peace in the silence. There is a fountain of divine light within you. You're a unique creature with a wonderful spiritual heritage and creative ability. This inner knowledge directs you now as you remain open to the revelation of God's love. You are confident of your guidance. You allow the flow of your thoughts to move through any distraction. You think divine love knowing that everything you need to know is revealed to you in the appropriate time and way. Your heart is filled with light as you focus your attention on the love of God. You open yourself to new ideas. Whatever decisions you need to make, whatever choices you decide are yours, divine love leads you to decide rightly and choose wisely. Everything necessary for fulfillment is within you as the perfect presence of God's love. Your every thought, word, and action flows through the filter of your loving awareness and compassion for all. You trust God for wisdom and counsel, and you open your heart through this prayer. Divine love illumines my path with the light of wisdom. And I ask you again to hold this thought. Divine love illumines my path with the light of wisdom in the silence. And we open ourselves now to divine love. We feel the healing energy surging from the fountain of life within us. From this fountain springs life, pure, powerful, healing, revitalizing each cell, tissue, and organ of our bodies. Physical and mental health are our birthright. We have strength enough, energy enough, and enthusiasm enough to do what we need to do. And in this moment, we feel wonderfully alive, mind and body. We experience health, glorious health, flowing effortlessly through us. There is no no power in limitation or disease. We now claim wholeness of mind and body for ourselves as well as for those who we are praying for. We envision each person rejoicing in the life and love of God as healing takes place. Deep in our souls, we acknowledge this truth. Divine love flows through my mind and body. There is no need beyond the prospering power of God's love. We recognize divine love as the source of our good. From the fountain of God's love within, we are led in prospering ways. And we open our minds and our hearts to the abundance that flows to us and through us in a never-ending stream of useful ideas equitable solutions, and financial support. We are blessed with supply to meet every need, and we gratefully accept and give thanks for this. As we begin to bring this time of prayer to a close, we feel the blessings of God's love lifting us to a higher understanding of ourselves and others. We leave this time of prayer with a sense of renewed dedication and love for God and for all humanity. We go forth now to be blessed and to be a blessing to the world. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. And wherever we are, 
God is. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. And I ask you to join me in praying and singing the Lord's Prayer. is long and you're losing your song in the night. You can be sure that the Lord has his hand on you, safe and secure. God will never abandon you. You are his treasure and God finds his pleasure in you. God who began a good work in you God who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it he'll be faithful to complete it God who started the work will be faithful to complete it in you mm-hmm God who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. He'll be faithful to complete it. God who started the work will be faithful to complete it in you. Today, I'd like to talk to you about embracing all of life. According to the Cleveland Clinic, our brains process about 70,000 thoughts a day. And as we know, our thoughts drive our emotions. So together with our thoughts and emotions, 
we establish a framework for our overall attitude or perspective. And our attitude and perspective determines how we see or interpret what happens in the world around us and how whatever may happen then affects each of us personally. Now King Gustav had a loyal advisor who had been with the king for many, many years. And while the advisor was very wise, he also had an annoying habit. No matter what was happening or what decision the king made, the guru always responded by nodding and declaring sagely, It is good. So one day, the king was out hunting, and his foot got caught in a snare, and one of his toes was severed completely from his foot. So when the advisor saw what had happened, once again, he nodded and said, it is good. The king just, I mean, he just couldn't take it anymore. He was absolutely furious with his advisor and immediately dismissed him. Once again, the wise man simply nodded and said, it is good. Hmm, interesting, huh? Well, several months later, that same King Gustav was out on another hunting expedition. Well, this time he was captured by a band of tribesmen. They took the king back to their village and they planned to use him as a sacrificial ceremony. When they discovered his toe was missing, they declared him unfit, and they let him go. When the king arrived safely back at the palace, he called for the advisor to be returned and put him back on his job. The king looked at the advisor and said, you know, you were right. Losing my toe was good. It actually saved my life today. And then after I told you to leave and you said it was good and I fired you, you said, that's good. Well, yeah, I'm giving you your job back now, but unless you can see the future, there's no way you could have known this day would ever come. Am I to believe that you can see the future? This was, this was the advisor's reply. No, your highness. I cannot see the future. However, I have come to know the truth that every event brings with it some good. And now I know what was good for me in your releasing me from my job. The king looked puzzled. What do you mean? He asked. As you know, I was your loyal servant. Had you not fired me, I would have been with you when you were captured by the tribesmen. Since all my fingers and toes are intact, it would have been me who was chosen for the sacrifice. For every event brings with it some good. And that's why we need to embrace all of life. The book of James chapter 1 verses 2 to 4 tell us this. Mm -hmm. Count it all joy when we meet various trials. And of course our unity principles are in alignment with this Bible verse and with this story. There is only one presence and one power in my life and in the universe. God, the good, omnipotent. And our essence is of God, and therefore we are also inherently good. We are co-creators with that divine presence. And the thoughts we hold in our minds produce after their kind. Our thoughts create our experiences. We live our lives knowing that God is good all the time when we practice these truths we are taught through unity principles. We need to embrace all of life. Where I live, there's a wooded area next door. 
And there are several paths through the trees. And I like to take walks, especially now that the weather's getting nicer. I just enjoy being out in nature. Well, there's a lot of large trees growing in this, in this nature preserve across the street. And the tree roots grow across many of the paths. Well, there's a spot by the creek that I love to go to. There's a little bench there and you can hear the water rippling by. It's just wonderful. And when I walk from my house through the woods to my spot in the creek, I've learned where these roots are. And so I'm careful not to trip over them. It's what we do, right? I mean, it just makes sense to become aware of the potential quote unquote stumbling blocks along the paths we walk through frequently. I mean, at least it's a common practice in the physical world. When we stumble in the physical world, we lose our balance and we make an adjustment. We reach out to break our fall. We might wobble or shift around on our weight to keep ourselves upright. It only takes seconds and we don't even have to think about it. It's part of our subconscious programming. But what about our mental worlds? There are mental stumbling blocks we trip over time and time again. We hold on to and relive some of our most painful memories. And instead of patting ourselves on the back for many of the things we accomplish, we often put our focus on what we didn't get done, what we haven't accomplished. And it seems that we mentally stumble and don't adapt quite as naturally or quickly as we do in the physical world, do we? We make a mistake. We say or do something we regret. And the next thing you know, we're belittling ourselves, calling ourselves all kinds of names. We remind ourselves of all the other times we've tried and failed. How could I be so stupid? I guess my dad was right. I'll never amount to anything. We keep tripping over the same mental stumbling blocks time and time again. Now we know we're co-creators with divine spirit. We know how powerful our thoughts and feelings are. We know when we focus on something, especially for longer periods of time, that's the experiences we're going to attract. Still, we somehow allow these mental stumbling blocks to get in our way and therefore create more experiences of a similar type. What we think about, we bring about. Thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. What we resist persists. We know those phrases, yet and we don't have to keep tripping over the same mental blocks holding us back. Instead, we can turn those stumbling blocks into the proverbial stepping stones. We can recognize the good that comes from seemingly bad experiences. We can look for the good. We can remember God is good all the time. We can embrace all of life by remembering that story of the advisor and tell ourselves every event brings with it some good. You know, Mike and I have attended a number of different unity churches over the years. And if, quite a few years ago, we were heavily involved in a church where we were members. And we were actually at the point where we were seriously contemplating putting our names in to join the board of trustees. Well, it was just about that same time that we learned that the contract of the minister that we have grown to love was not going to be renewed. And of course, neither of us was happy about it. 
Now, while we were members of that church, I had become a prayer chaplain, and I also acted as platform assistant from time to time. I was also very involved in Toastmasters. So when we were left without a full-time minister, I volunteered to step into the pulpit and share the message every once in a while. After a while, in addition to my home church, I also started speaking in other Unity churches. And one day, this is a few years later, I received a call from a friend I had met in a networking group. And he, had, he told me that he'd heard that I was doing some speaking at Unity churches and asked me if I would be interested in speaking at the church he attended. And I did. The years passed. I continued to speak at that church and actually started speaking there more and more frequently. And as the years passed, people would approach me after the service and some of them would assume I was a unity minister. And when they learned that wasn't the case, I was often encouraged to become licensed and ordained. And it wasn't that I wasn't interested, but for many years, I kept stumbling over the same excuses. I would tell myself, oh, I can't do that. I can't go back to school. That takes four years. Besides, it's too difficult. It takes way too long and I'm too old and it costs too much. And the list went on and on. And then there were those hidden excuses, the ones buried deeply in my own subconscious mind. The excuses I didn't even want to admit to myself. The ones that told me, Anita, you're not good enough. You're not worthy of becoming a unity minister. You know, back when that first unity church that Mike and I were attending, back when we parted ways because the minister we'd come to love left, I had labeled that event as bad. And at the time, it really seemed like it to me. Yet, had that not happened, it's very likely that I would not be graduating from ministerial school in just a couple of months. And that minister I lost, we remained close friends. In fact, he's the unity minister who sponsored my application to ministerial school. Now, I know there are a number of you who remember Jack Boland. I mean, he was a beloved minister, a teacher, a mentor to many. And he passed away in 1992. And at the time, it was a great loss. And if not for Jack's passing, Spiritual Life Center of Troy, Royal Oak Unity, Unity East, Lake Orion Unity, and several others would not exist today. Many people whose lives have been changed for the better by the teachings of unity might never have been exposed to these truths. And that's another reason why we want to embrace all of life. Because we know all things work together for our highest good. You know, more often than not, our most significant growth follows the most challenging experiences of life. Once we take that first little tiny tentative step on the path of self-discovery, we find the work of exploring those hidden shadows of our lives can also bring the greatest rewards. We can begin to live more authentically. Our lives begin to take on new meaning. And perhaps for the first time, we discover our true purpose where we truly begin to heal. 
You know, these challenging times are often when we learn to listen, truly listen to our inner guidance system, which is the true GPS. It's the God positioning system. And that's the system that always gives us the right direction and the strength we need to move forward. Our challenges, what we might call our problems, aren't coming from out there somewhere. All that stuff is just that. It's just stuff. It's the stuff of life on this plane of existence. And that's also the stuff where there are opportunities for real growth. Unity teaches practical Christianity. We can make it our practice, no matter what's happening, to think that everything happening right now is the best possible thing that conceivably could happen and embrace all of life. When we find ourselves in a challenging situation, instead of getting upset or angry, we can remember this is the best possible thing that could conceivably happen and then behave as if it's true. What if we were stopped and received a traffic ticket and it actually was a good thing because it, it helped us to avoid getting into a life-altering accident? Wouldn't that make that speeding ticket look like a tremendous benefit? The universe sends us miracles on a regular basis. We just don't always recognize them as the miracles that they are. Instead, we might see them as an annoyance or an inconvenience or a real problem. So let's practice what we profess. It's not what happens, it's how we respond, how we think about what's taking place in our lives and what we do as a result of what we think and feel that makes all the difference. Our job is simply to embrace all of life. Namaste. It is good.
We are grateful for the Unity of the Bay Choir. And thank you, Nancy Ingalls, for your marvelous singing this morning. Reverend Anita, that was an inspiring message. We are pleased that each of you could join us for today's service, and we invite you now to join in our prayer of sharing. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And we do ask that you support Spiritual Life Center. We would be so grateful for your donation to this ministry. There are four ways to do so. First is online through our secure website, www.slctroy.com forward slash give. A second way is to mail a check to Spiritual Life Center, 41340 Fox Run Road number 106, Novi, Michigan, 48377. A third way is to call my cell, 248-925-6214, and speak directly to me with credit card information for a one-time charge. A fourth way is to go to the weekly email that we send you each Friday and on there, you'll see in a couple of places, donate here or donate online. And if you just click there, it will be clear how to proceed. We welcome anyone who is joining us for one of your first times, and we invite you to join our email list by visiting our website, www.slctroy.com. And in the upper right corner, you'll see join email list. If you will just click there, it will be clear how to enter your email address and name. And we will see that each Friday morning you receive an email that has the link for the upcoming Friday service, as well as the link for any upcoming classes. It will also provide the information about activities of the church, which you are welcome to join us in. For prayer requests, send these to ronaldfscott at gmail.com. We will forward these to our prayer team of more than 30 powerful praying members of the church who are delighted to support you and your loved ones. We will also forward them to Silent Unity at Unity Village where they are prayed over for 30 days. In addition, you may call Silent Unity on your own 24-7 and pray directly with a prayer chaplain, you reach them at 1-800-NOW-PRAY. Next Sunday, well, Reverend Martha will provide us with another wonderful message. An email was sent to you this week with details about a gathering planned in Detroit on Sunday, May 7th, just three weeks from now. All of us in the Detroit area can come together for a fun time starting at 1 p.m. following the service. It will be at the Detroit Shipping Company, right in downtown Detroit area, midway between the new center area and downtown. If you haven't been there, you have a real treat in store. Many of us will be coming together to, to connect, and it'll be fun to be together. We'll share more details in coming weeks. <laughs> Immediately following the end of today's service, everyone is invited to join us on Zoom for a time of social connection. The link was in your Friday email. But first, let's join together in our peace song and benediction. God bless. Peace. 
Please begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my joyous vow to take each moment and live each moment. And now as you go forth, know that the light of God surrounds you, the love of God enfolds you. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The power of God protects you. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The presence of God watches over you. The Lord lift up Continents upon thee and grant thee peace. Wherever you are, God is. Amen. Amen. Go your way rejoicing. All is truly well.